Hi, I'm Chris West. In this video, I'm going to explain my spring back technique, which I use for fingering in the lower positions of the double bass, and by that I mean everything below thumb position. Using this technique will improve your fluency and your intonation in the area of the bass where we spend most of our time. So let me explain how it works. Okay, so normally when we're playing, we try to play as many notes as we can in one position, because that's the most reliable way of playing in tune. But eventually we need to play a note that doesn't lie under the hand, and we have to shift. And then we play another bunch of notes before we have to shift again. Now with just a couple of exceptions, you can always manage two notes before shifting. But you can, you can play any interval in one position on the bass. That's why we tune the eighth in fourths. Very often, two notes is the most you can play before you have to shift. And so we end up shifting around a lot. We practice hard to make these shifts as accurate and as imperceptible as we can, but every time we shift, there's a risk of it interrupting the line or spoiling the intonation. So what can we do to improve our chances? Well, the next best thing to being able to play a passage in one position is to shift a semitone away for a single note and then come back to where you were. Let's have a look at an example. Imagine you want to play these notes. It could be in any key, but here I've chosen one where there's no opportunity to use an open string. I could finger this with two notes in every position. That would be a perfectly normal way of fingering it, and I'd have to shift four times every time I went round the repeat. As you can see, my left hand is having to move a fair amount. If I make errors in those shifts, I'm going to get more and more out of tune. It's much neater to finger it like this. The dotted line over the B is the way I indicate that this one note is in a position a semitone away from the other notes. This time there is much less shifting for my left hand to do. Because I'm always returning to the same position, there is no chance of any errors accumulating. I'll talk a bit later about how I can really make sure I'm always coming back to exactly the same place. So this way, we can play these notes better in tune but more importantly, all of a sudden we're putting five notes into a single chunk for your brain to deal with, instead of the usual two. Putting things together into chunks is a much more efficient way for you to operate, and leaves you with more brain space to think about other things, such as watching the conductor, or listening to your colleagues. That's the reason we learn scales and arpeggios. It's much easier for your brain to give a single command telling your fingers to play a certain scale, than it is to specify all the individual notes. And talking about scales, notice how the little passage I was just playing comes in an F-sharp harmonic minor scale. And in a descending F-sharp melodic minor scale. And in an A major scale. And if I change the G sharp to a G natural, then it comes in D major. Or D minor melodic. And like I said, I could have chosen any key. So you can use a fingering like this in every single scale. It's a really useful chunk to have in your armory. Now the reason this fingering is so secure is because we have a well-established position, we played at least two notes in it, then we move away for a single note, and then move back to the original position for at least two more notes. So it's always going to be a nice solid chunk of at least five notes. Now you might be saying, how often is that going to happen? How useful really is this? So let me show you another example to convince you that this is going to crop up again and again. Suppose you have to play this. You're probably already going to finger that one, two, four. The A is a semitone from the other notes, so this is already a simple spring back fingering. But now suppose it was a C sharp. Your first thought might be to keep it on one string, playing one, one, four, four, over and over. This really isn't ideal. It's cumbersome, and all those repeated fingers are not good for clear articulation. And you're using a different finger on every beat, every time you come back to it. So there's a risk the intonation won't match. So maybe it's better to play a spring back fingering. 
you play all in one basic position with one note, a semitone shift away. You might play the A and B together and shift with the C sharp. Or you might play the B and C sharp together and shift for the A. If the notes came in a different order, you might want to play the A and C sharp together and shift for the B. And in fact there were two ways of doing that, because there were two ways of playing A and C sharp in the same position. So there are four possibilities altogether. And if you have a passage formed out of these three notes, it's likely that one of these four springback fingerings will feel like a neat and tidy way of playing. And here's the really good news. This will work on any three notes. Not just any key, but any three notes on the bass, as long as they aren't miles apart. So there you have the four possibilities when it's a C natural. And there are loads more examples. You can take a screenshot or link to my website from the notes below if you want to take a closer look. Here's an example that I captured out in the wild. It's the end of the bass section solo from Act 4 of Verdi's Otello. Now it's in A-flat minor, so there's only one note in the whole passage that you can play on an open string. So for using standard fingerings, without springback fingerings, you'd have to be shifting every two notes. Nightmare. But by using a succession of no fewer than seven springbacks, you can reduce it down to just a few manageable chunks. It's much easier for your brain to handle. I hope that by now I've convinced you that this way of fingering is a very powerful technique. And if you can get used to spotting where it can be used, it will improve your playing and make more efficient use of your brain power. So before we finish, I want to have a quick look at the mechanics of how we do this, because I can think of at least three ways of doing these fingerings. Firstly, I can just play them with normal shifts, keeping my right arm at right angles to the fingerboard the way you would usually. These are still good fingerings if you use standard technique, so you might just choose to use these fingerings and not make any changes at all to the way you play. Secondly, you could play these fingerings with a pivot technique. That's where you keep your thumb fixed and your fingers pivot around it. So if you usually have your second finger opposite your thumb, you can move a semitone back by putting your fourth finger there instead, or move a semitone up by replacing your second finger with your first finger. There are some really good players who play this way. But I don't do that. I keep the thumb in the same place in relation to the fingers when I do the semitone shift. But it's not quite like a normal shift. Normally when I shift, the forearm stays at right angle to the fingerboard the whole time. But when I do this springback shift, I keep my elbow still. So the arm, arm is at a slight angle and there's a tiny bit of tension. That way the arm remembers where it was before the shift. And it's only too happy to spring back to its original position when it gets the chance. And that's why I call this technique the springback. I hope you like this video and that you have fun experimenting with my springback technique. Bye for now. <laughs>